Okay, let's discuss the concepts beyond a free particle model. One of these useful concepts is the idea of effective mass. Um, before we go there, we actually need to consider so why we want to why we want to discuss this, why to go beyond the free particle model. If we look in the in the simple dispersion relation where we have the momentum and energy, the and the free particle consideration assumes that the dispersion relation is parabolic, so the energy is proportional to the k square. And uh, in principle, the presence of periodic potential of um, of the atoms in the crystal modifies the dispersion relation. It can be very, can be sometimes very different from from this um, naive free particle model. Um, one of the um, quite famous examples. So if we look in the two dimensions, we have c k x k y, and uh, and the dispersion relation is parabolic in the free particle model. But if we consider the case of graphene, there for sufficiently low energies uh, again kx ky energy the dispersion relation actually takes the shape of the of the cone it's like a conical um, let me change the color So it takes the form of the conical dispersion relation. So the energy and the momentum, they depend linearly of each other. And that's a quite a different case from a free particle model. Um, we will consider uh, later how to actually derive this behavior uh, from, um, um, from the uh, framework of, um, of a tight binding model. Uh, but currently, what I want to discuss, the introduction of um, of the idea of effective mass, and um, this basically considers the um, the derivative um, uh, of this dispersion relation in the vicinity of a low of low of low momenta, and um, so the way it works, um, we can use the concept of uh, group velocity, so Vg. Before we were discussing the the drift velocity. Uh, which was the average motion of the particle. So in this case, we will discuss the group velocity, which is the propagation speed of the of the wave packet. Let's say we have a wave packet, and we discuss the evolution, the propagation of this wave packet in a crystal. And uh, so, by definition, we have the group velocity as uh, the decay. So that will be a derivative of this um, of the dispersion relation and the slope there. And so the electron with some specified momentum, some specified wave vector, moves through a perfect lattice with a constant velocity. So there's no change in, in momentum and no scattering. And that's a kind of a contradiction. So we know that there's the something happens there. So the, the scattering happens. And that's why we introduced actually the Druda model. But now we can see how we can um, adjust to... Um, non-ideal behavior, so we are going beyond the free particle model and now we're considering the, the presence of a crystal. Um, so if again we look in the one dimension, slightly easier, so you have momentum, energy, and you have um, a dispersion relation e is proportional to k squared. Now if we plot here, if we plot here a group velocity, that will be basically a straight line. So the derivative is a straight line. And then also accidentally, we can introduce some sort of the acceleration, right? Acceleration associated with this one, which we define as dvg dt. And then you can take a derivative because we see how this works. So one over each bar. So I'm just basically, I'm just taking this part uh, DDT of DDK. And what you can do, you can then rewrite this one as uh, 1 over h bar d square e d k square d k d t.
and uh, and then you can uh, recombine the this equation so to express decay dt now it will be a times h bar um, times uh, d square e dk squared minus one Because we have this kind of concept of force, uh, inter acceleration, we can also introduce a concept of force. Which is a derivative of momentum, which is h bar dk dt. And that's this bit here. Right? And now we can rewrite everything again in terms of um, this quantity. So we put h bar so we have two h bars h bar square d square e dk square minus one times a and this part here actually has a dimension of mass you can check some the force acceleration you have this the mass f equals ma second uh, newton second law something similar to what we did for the druda model now we kind of uh, do it doing it from a different perspective so this is a dimension of mass. And that's here, that's where the concept of um, effective mass comes from. So usually it's labeled M star, and you write it as h bar square d square e dk square minus one. So it's inverse curvature of the dispersion relation. Um, in the free particle model, that's kind of like a, a straightforward. You can you can check, you can plug in the numbers there, see what you get. There is some constant value. It's proportional indeed to the curvature, and this means um, now if we consider, we can we can play with this. If we have, um, let's say, a material where because of its crystal structure, um, the dispersion relation remains the same. So we have a, a, a approximately approximately parabolic dependence but then this, this, this the shape of these cones uh, is um, is different so maybe in one case you have a behavior like that and in the other case for different material maybe you have a behavior like that so you see this one has much higher curvature than this one and this means the effective mass because it's inverse part for this one we'll have uh, this m star, let's say, labeled 1, and this is m star 2. So m2 will be much, much higher than m1. So you can say that the particles in this uh, in this system with wide dispersion relation behave as very heavy particles compared to this light one. And this can be actually brought a bit further if we look now how this uh, how this works let's take again k energy and this is our dispersion here so for this uh, for this effective mass it's kind of like similar to what you have in the in the case of um, of a normal uh, normal free particle model, but if you have let's say inverted inverted dispersion relation, so with the now it's upside down, so you get the negative values, right of the of the derivative. So on this part, the effective mass is actually smaller than zero. Here is bigger than zero, and those what you usually call in the semiconductor like a holes and electrons. And again, we we discussed they can be they can be anisotropic, right? So um, uh, they will be um, they can be asymmetric. So, for example, the, the holes can be maybe of very large curvature. So, you can say heavy heavy holes, and maybe you have also very light very light electrons, like light electrons and so on now you can think about two other extreme examples 
in your in your free time think about these two cases so one the first case is graphene where you have this um, the linear linear dispersion relation of what would be the mass and the second case uh, what will happen if you have a dispersion relation so again k energy energy if you have a dispersion relation which looks like uh, that where you have um, a sufficiently large flat region so you have here it's kind of like it's called flat band so what mass on the particles.